Today is March 10th, 1996. This is an interview with Nina Kaleska. My name is Adam Brown. It's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States of America. The language is English. Today is March 10th, 1996. My name is Adam Brown. I'm conducting an interview with Nina Kaleska in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States of America. The language is English. Could you say your name, please, and spell it? My name is Nina Kaleska, K-A-L-E-S-K-A. -E Originally, the name was Kaleska with a C-K. And spell your first name, please. Nina, N-I-N-A. And could you say the n name of the town you were born in and spell it, please? <coughs> right. I was born in Grodno, G-R-O-D-N-O, -O, which was Poland at the time when I was born. And it is now part of the Belarus. Okay, and um, uh, were there any other names you were known by, nicknames or uh, <coughs> no? Your child? My name, uh, my given name when I was born was Nelly, N-E-L-L-I, and uh, it really hasn't been anything but Nina since 1946 when I came to London. Okay, and uh, what is your birth date, please? I was born April the 11th, 1929. And what is your current age, please? I'm I will be 67 next month. Good, thank you. Um, <coughs> let's start with the life in, in your home with your family in Grodno. Um, what are your earliest memories as a child? Uh, my family consisted of my mother and father and my sister, who was five years older. It was a traditional Jewish family, not overly religious. We observed the normal holidays without too much fanfare, which everyone did at that point. I attended first um, public school, and then I attended a parochial school, both Catholic schools for two years, and then a Hebrew school, because they were very good schools. <coughs> I was always very much involved in music and dance, and it was a lovely, warm, normal home uh, with a lot of love, a lot of discipline. And the town was essentially, um, well, everyone knew everybody else, but I was really too young at that point to, uh, to know. Uh, what to remember, so to speak. I had my friends, I went to school, <coughs> after school activities. Life was good. So it was a happy time? Yes. Childhood? It was a very happy childhood, right. And of course, that happiness and that upbringing had sustained me for many years <coughs> during a very difficult time. And I think that probably had a lot to do with the fact that it was instilled in me this feeling of caring and love, which I think projects itself um, when you need it. It's like a reserve. Of course, you don't realize it at the time, but it's there. So you, you would say, would you say that you had a close relationship with your parents and your sister? Uh, yes, it was a close relationship. My father was away a great deal. He was working. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I adored my father. I loved my mother. My mother was more of a disciplinarian. And I adored my sister, who was a uh, quite a remarkable young woman, young girl, who was a champion skater, champion gymnastist, champion swimmer, extremely bright. Um, and she is, a, to a great deal, responsible for my later on, for my survival at Auschwitz. And you said your father traveled a lot. What was, what was he doing? He was a forester. He would travel. Um, he would be out of town a great deal, uh, dealing with different <coughs> forestry. And so I remember being terribly happy when he was home. <laughs> he was a very loving father. I hardly remember him at this point. I can't remember his looks too well. What, what do his you remember about him? What, what his warmth, his caring, his natural way of just being with him. But you have to remember that I lost them both when I was 12. So the memories 
of the details that one would normally remember are simply slowly fading away. The core of remembrance is there, but I, the, the, the idea of the face is fading, which is unfortunately, I don't have any photographs of him. What would you do with him when he was at home? Um, what kind of things? Do you remember going out and doing special things with him or? Not necessarily. Just being no, with him? No, just, just being there. He would take me sledding a great deal because we had a lot of snow. But I can't remember any one specific thing that we did together. And would he normally do things with your sister and you together? Or yes, was well, as, a, as a family when we were together, yes. <coughs> um, did he have uh, relatives uh, also in the town that you knew? I am one of 48 who have survived the Holocaust. And again, I must stress at this early town. beginning mm -hmm, that the word Holocaust is uh, almost offensive to me at this point. I hate the word survivor. It's yes, I am. I, uh, there's no other, probably no other <coughs> word in the English language, but survivor uh, uh, sort of is a connotation of, of, of a deliberate type of thing. My survival has absolutely nothing to do with me, I think. I mean, one did not practice for survival. One did not have a <coughs> chance to say, I'm going to survive. So that I say I talk about the Holocaust because it is, and I talk about survival because it is, but somehow um, <coughs> the, the word survivor uh, per se is sort of a little offensive to me, to me personally. It has nothing to do with anything else. Now, there were 48 members of our family. That means my parents, my mother had one sister who lived in Grodno with, three, with my th three cousins and my aunt who was here in this country who originally brought me to this country. And my father had a number of brothers and sisters. I don't remember them. And they all perished. There were, extent there, there were other cousins and <coughs> from different towns. My grandparents died, both sets of grandparents died before I was born, so I did not know them at all. And so that um, when one talks about the family, the family that I know are my mother, father, my sister, my mother's older sister, and her children. All of us, by the way, were very, very musical and very involved in the arts, per se. And uh, I do remember that part. There was always some kind of form of singing or piano or the guitar or the accordion. Music was very important in, our li in my life. Tell me a little more about that, if, if you could, about that uh, childhood. Uh, well, as a child, uh, well, in 1939, Grodno was occupied, was, Poland was divided. Part of it went to, to, the, to, to Germany. Our part, because it was the eastern part, was part of the Russian, uh, of, of the Soviet Union at that time. So Grodno was, I was in the Soviet Union for, in fact, two years, and I learned English, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Russian, and actually Belarus, which was also a, a different language. Because the, th in the school, they were very anxious to find children who were talented in one form or another. They went out of their way to seek me out. And so I was singing with a large choir and won most of the competitions. It was something that came perfectly naturally to me. And my sister was equally uh, sought out for her uh, both gymnastic abilities and her musical abilities. Uh, so that uh, singing and dancing and performing was very much part of my life from the very beginning. We, we you've f did you have formal training in singing before? Not at singing, at that no, age? not no. as a singer, not that. But I started on piano, of course, and, and ballet which every nice Jewish girl from a good home <laughs> was encouraged to, to, to do. Um, and so that essentially, as I said, we, we, we were involved in, uh, in a number of activities after school and even within the school. And uh, the directors of the school had told my mother, the Russian directors, said that uh, we really are not that interested in her academic abilities, but we will watch her musical talents. And as a result, in 1941, just before the, 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 war, <coughs> uh, the war broke out again, when the, the Germans occupied Russia or s went to war with Russia, 
My sister and I both won major competitions and we went to Bialystok. And I remember very distinctly coming back on the train it, that there was a great deal of activity. There were lots of um, military men. And you know, it's funny when you think of 12 year old girls in this country and you think of 12 year old girls where I came from, it's night and day. We simply were not aware of so many things as a child. We were shielded. I played with dolls. Today, a 12-year-old girl does not play with dolls. And of course, that's what happened. The, uh, that was the end. That was actually the end for all of us, as, as, as Jews are concerned. And very shortly after that, of course, the Germans occupied Grodno. And very shortly after that, we were not allowed to walk on the sidewalk. We wore a yellow star. Soon after that, two ghettos were formed in, in Grodno. So this is about 1941, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Started in uh, the towards the night, yes. And mm -hmm. you were 12 years old. Let's go back just a little bit before you tell me about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in how you felt as part of the Jewish community in Grodno. Mm -hmm. um, you were from a traditional Jewish family. Right. And what about friends? Um, do you have a lot of Jewish friends, non-Jewish friends, uh, school friends? How, how was there that? There were just people that we went to school with and neighbors. That's, I cannot distinguish, frankly, any one particular person from another. I know my sister had lots and lots of friends, and uh, my feeling was, God, when am I ever going to be old enough to, to go out with boys or, or, <laughs> or have a party like she does? I was the younger sister, so, you know, it was kind of, in the, it was just the two of us, as I mentioned. Uh, there is no, not anything particularly that comes to mind as far as a particular friend. I do know that they all died. There's one person in Australia today mm. who was a friend of mine, whom I found, who found me actually in London after the war, who, with whom I played. With, I, I was Marlena Dietrich or Greta Garbo, and she was either the other way. We would play very differently. We would invent our plays. And as far as I know, there is one person here in Philadelphia who is from Grodno, uh, Dr. Felix Zandman, and my friend Mara, who is in Australia in Sydney, whom I did visit. These are the only two people I know who are from Grodno. I do not know anyone else. I do know that, they, that Grodno was devastated. You mentioned that you went to a, uh, a public school, a Catholic school, or they were both mm -hmm. Catholic, and a Hebrew school. Correct. How, uh, tell me about little well, bit my parents have always been very conscious of education, and education came as a top priority above anything else. And apparently, there was this Catholic school. I don't know why we were put there. Both my sister and I went there for, I believe, two years because it was considered an excellent school. There were only five Jewish children in that school, and believe it or not, we were allowed to uh, have our own Jewish instruction which is kind of unusual. And then, I don't know why, we were then transferred to a Tarbot, which was a parochial school f only from the point of view that Hebrew was taught as a language. And, tha and then nothing. As and a my, uh, my formal education finished in fifth grade, so oh. I had made it up later on in life. But until that time, formally, I had a fifth grade level schooling. So the Hebrew school itself, was that uh, in addition to the, the regular school? No, no, that was it. We learned everything. And we learned a lot. And would you say you were a good student? Uh, did you enjoy in it? Some, in some aspects, I was very good. In others, I was terrible, simply because I was not interested. <laughs> Math was not my, my bag, no. But geography and history and, and, and arts and literature, and we, we had it all in, in fifth grade. Um, uh, I was an average student, I think. And your parents, were they intellectually inclined? Uh, my mother was intellectually inclined, much more so than my father. And did she come from a more s a scholarly Jewish family? Or? Yes. My grandfather was a rather well-known cantor. Uh, only he was a rabbi. Uh, and so that, um, 
they did go to opera. They did go to concerts. She did sing. I remember all that. They spoke languages. I was furious when my mother and my sisters did not want me to understand something and they spoke in French to each other. And of course, I didn't know French at that time. I learned that later. Uh, you say, what, does, what, what, what was life like? Life was good. Life was comfortable. Life was for me. Now, I am sure that as Jews, my parents must have felt differently. You never felt any... Yes. There has always been a great deal of anti-Semitism. Poland is traditionally a very, was, maybe still is, I don't know, a very anti-Semitic country. It's sort of in, I don't know, it's, it's, it's always been part of their makeup. And particularly because I was blonde, blue-eyed, uh, I was never distinguished. That was something I'll tell you later when I was in, in Auschwitz. They said, are you Jewish? This, this silly thing that one has to look a particular way to be Jewish or, or Dutch or, or Swedish or anything else. <coughs> My whole family had blue eyes and blondish hair. Uh, but as a child, I, I, I don't remember, I, I, I remember at Passover time there were windows being broken by some of young hooligans because they kept saying, you know, you killed Christ, are you drinking Christian children's blood, all the kind of absolutely archaic, um, n horrible, ignorant stuff that they were probably taught, either at home or in church or I don't know where. I do remember that part. But as a whole, my sister and I were protected. We were being educated. We were being clothed. We were not wealthy, but we were very comfortable. And you, you never, you never felt, or you never remember being discriminated against directly in school or by teachers or students. No, or but then again, I didn't know. Not, not I directly. But then again, I was, in, for, I was in a, in a in a Catholic school for two years. They knew I was Jewish. Uh, there was absolutely a lot of anti-Semitism in Grodno, as I'm sure that was all over the place. But uh, whether I was personally discriminated against, I don't remember such incidents. It may have been. I don't remember this. But mm -hmm. I do remember distinctly on Passover. And I kept asking my mother, what, what, why is this happening? And how do you answer that? Windows are being broken because you are having a beautiful Passover Seder. And did anything ever happen to people that you knew or family, you know, relatives, cousins? That did anything ever happen like that happened? Uh, terrorist? I am sure it did. I just, I personally don't don't know. But then again, I wasn't conscious of the. Uh, I was not conscious of of some of the things that were happening. I really do believe we were very shielded. Perhaps if I had been older. I know that when I read about it today, I read about all kinds of things that I did know, not know about. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Um, did, did your parents speak Yiddish in the home? We all? spoke Yiddish, uh, but mainly Polish. I spoke Yiddish very badly. Unfortunately, I don't anymore. Um, but in our home, we spoke Polish. And were you educated in German as well? No. Never? No. No. Okay. Not in German. In school, we had, we had, of course, Polish. We had Russian during the Russian occupation. Russian. Polish is a language, strangely enough, but Russian. We had French and Latin. But never German? No, no. not German. But my mother spoke German. How, how did because she Because I think there was, a, when she was born, I think, uh, Europe has been so <laughs> mixed up with so many different people invading everybody else that uh, languages were just common. <coughs> and do you remember taking any uh, family vacations or any time in the summer going no. off to the yes. mountains? Yes, well, it's no vacation. We had a little, uh, the way people go here, uh, let's say, for a, they, they, they rent a summer, a summer home. Yes, we did that in a place called Lososhna. And um, my, my sister and my my sister and I would go to a camp, to a summer camp for about three or four weeks, and then we would be with our parents in that little lovely summer home. Father would come over the weekend on a horse, very romantic. 
he was actually a horse. Uh, 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 I remember my father with breeches, leather jacket, sunburned face. In the winter, as you know, we had very severe winters there. A leather jacket, a leather cap, and breeches and, and boots. And that's the way I remember him best of all. So he was an outdoors Well, because person. he worked in the, f in the forest, yeah. yeah. He was a great horseman. Um. Is there anything you particularly like to say about school experience uh, before 1941 that you remember? Uh. Uh, no. Um, school was something that was part of any young child's life. There was no such thing as not going to school. You went and you loved it. As I said, some, some subjects were more interesting to me than others, but on the whole, I enjoyed it. Did you go there on Saturdays? There were lots of gymnastics. Mm. On Saturdays, no. You never went on Saturdays? No, we went Sundays. And was that normal for everyone, or because you were Jewish, you didn't go on Saturday? Um. Uh, yes, in the Talmud, I believe, if I'm correct, we went Sunday, but not Saturday. In public school, we would go, uh, I, I, you know, I don't remember. I, I don't remember, but I do remember in Tarwood we would go on a, on Sunday, but not on, on Saturday. Of course, Saturday was 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 people went to synagogue. And did you go to synagogue also with the family? On occasion during high holidays, um, not as a as a regular. Uh, we were not that. Uh, my, my our household wasn't that that ordered. In other words, we were not that traditional. We were we would go observe all of the holidays. We had a kosher home. Of course, and <coughs> during the high ho during Yom Kippur, my I remember my mother had had a little table set with food for my sister and me, um, because people were fasting and children were not supposed to fast, and that it was everything was done with a lot of care, and a lot of care for the children. Children came first, in my family, and I enjoyed it. Life was fine. Did you observe the Sabbath at home every Friday night? Uh, yes. Lighting candles? Uh? I believe yes, yes, we did that. But but beyond that, I'm not sure there was any. My, my actually, it's interesting. Uh, my mother was much more religious than my father. And my father would look at me on occasion and say, "Your mother wants me to go to synagogue. I really don't want to go." No, we had. There was a light there. There was a. It. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You didn't feel burdened by. Uh, no. The religion, uh, not at per all. se, not at all. The synagogue, in, by the way, in Grodno was very beautiful. And uh, for the longest time, I couldn't go near a synagogue for years, even in this country, because that's where they made the the original <coughs> tragedy. We can write there. They would uh, everybody was brought in from the synagogue. Um, and I remember the synagogue very distinctly. I have no idea whether it's still there or not, but uh, it had uh, it had some very significant memories for me. It was lovely to go to synagogue, no, not necessarily to services, but the children were there playing outside, but that sort of thing. Mm. It was a, a piece of life that is simply gone forever. That feeling of the small town, in a sense, the togetherness people caring for each other, people caring for the children, putting on plays and doing the right thing. Um, that simply is not there anymore. Poland, all of Europe, has lost a tremendous cultural community that can never be reborn again. The world has lost something very special. You consider the greatness of so many people who how many Einsteins were lost? How many Freuds were lost? There is you can't count that. It's it's a it's an endless chain of events that simply disappeared from this earth for no reason whatsoever. So you you mentioned um, 1941. Your sister and you traveled to Bialystok. And then you noticed the military presence. Yes, that was the beginning. Of course, I we did not know what happened, but of course that was the the pact that was broken that Hitler broke with Stalin. And uh, they were uh, mobilizing actually. And the moment we came back to Grodno, 
the bombs began to fall. It was rather badly. And uh, that was the beginning of the end, really. So what, what do you remember immediately upon your return? Uh, bombs? What I remember very distinctly upon my return was that my parents were waiting for us. And we, we, heard the, we actually heard bombs. The, the, the planes were flying. And we, were go we went to the bunker. And then we went outside. This I remember very distinctly. And we went outside when the bomb stopped. And there was a German tank in front of our house. Of course, I did not. You know, at that point, we still had no idea what was to come. But it was an ominous sound. It was an ominous sign. My parents knew more than I did. My sister knew. And uh, that was it. That was, that was the beginning of the end. No school, no nothing, actually. So life stopped the way we had known it to be, forever changed. Very sad to have suddenly, when I think about it today, that you've lost absolutely everything from scratch. It's like a life that has not existed, except in my mind, in my memories. And it's, it's very precious. It's very, very precious. I live with it every day. I don't cry about it, but I live with it every day. And everything I do, in a sense, say, would my mother or father be proud of me? That has been instilled, this idea of, <clears throat> uh, am I a productive member of society? Am I doing something right? Would they be ashamed of me? I adored my sister, who saved me many, many times. And I, she's with me all the time. I miss her because she was with me. I held her when she died. And that was something that you simply can't erase, and you don't want to erase it from the memory. People say, you know, don't, don't remember. That's ridiculous. You can't not remember. You might as well have no memory. That's true, yeah. So you were always close, uh, your sister and, and you. Uh we became, cl well, when we were home, not that much, because she was five years older. And I think, you know, fi uh, five years older is, is a tremendous difference in the life of, uh, of two young uh, do kids who say, don't bother me, I'm <laughs> I have my own friends. Um, I admired her enormously. She was extremely talented and tremendously liked, surrounded by, <coughs> by many, many friends. Um, but what stands out more than ever is we became very close because we were separated from our parents during the second ghetto. And so we were, my sister Sally and I were together. And then we were together in Auschwitz. And then she died three months later. So that's something that is very precious to me. I remember her very well. And I will tell you about her a little later.